All right, Jace, back for another episode in the Ted Shed. Tonight, we've got a special guest in, our first female guest. Do you want to go grab her? Will do. You okay. get behind the bar? Yeah. Already... I'm, I'm already, already there. there. I'm, I'm going to get the best. <laughs> 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 Whoa! <laughs> Welcome. Hey, fellas. <laughs> I've got you over here on the, the tall stool. Yeah. This is Glenn. G'day. Hey, Glenn. Anissa, nice Anissa, to nice meet to meet you. Anissa, Jason. Jason, Anissa, nice to meet you. All right, Come so on, this here. one. That's, that's you. All right, I've got to pull a handbag now. All right, oh. that's the first <laughs> time I've had that, Jason. Yeah. Oh, well, that's, you know, that's like a woman's secret weapon, right? Oh. There is like so much shit in the handbag. I swear there's a grappling iron and everything in there. I've seen, seen. I've seen Mary Poppins. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. Yeah. That's it. You that's always... It. Woman with a handbag is well prepared, is all I'm saying. Yeah, right. Yeah. Fair yeah. enough. So never complain about your wife having her handbag. No, right. no, there's always something in there. And particularly, I think if we're at the footy or something, it's like, you can have my keys, can you hold my wallet, can you hold my phone? Yeah, exactly. It's, it's just good. got the first aid kit there when you do something stupid. Everything. You know? yeah. you Everything. Are, you ask for lip balm a lot out of those. Oh, shut up. Yeah. What would you like to drink? Ooh, <laughs> what have we got? Well, well I don't have a lot of mixes because we did film the other night, but okay. I do have some, whatever you want on the top shelf, I've got <laughs> mixes, I've got. Uh, Dry ginger ale, I've got Coke no sugar, or Pepsi no sugar. Oh, um, this yeah. is well stocked. Yeah. Well, it's getting low, to be honest. Okay. We've, we've, had a few, we've had a few nights in here, as you can imagine. Um, okay, yeah. let's, if you don't mind, mm -hmm. let's let's dig into the vodka. Yeah, sure. Let's what would that. you like it mixed with? Um, oh, oh, look. You don't have any like soda, do you? I've got soda, but I don't have lime. That's fine. Is Let's that right? do that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You yeah. gotta, you gotta taste the vodka. All these, <laughs> all these <laughs> white women. Eighty percent vodka, twenty percent. I've got um, a bit of yeah. orange juice I have to put in there as no, well. No, 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 no. You know what you like. Yeah. yeah. This is, this <clears throat> is the fun thing. Like, okay, so my background is Russian. Oh. Russian family. Um, you don't mess with vodka. You just right. don't. You know. <laughs> do you have a a brand of vodka that you like? Russian gold standard. Right. Russian gold standard. Yeah. Yep. You got it. It's sometimes hard to find. Okay. It's in um, a beautiful. So you've had a Russian standard? No. No. It's a, it's a beautiful bottle with a black label. Right. But there's gold standard, which has got like gold foil on it. It's actually it's a gorgeous bottle. Oh, nice. Oh, it sounds oh, like. Well, I hope moment. that's okay. Thank you. <laughs> what do you fellas drink? <laughs> Jason, what do you have? Um, I don't drink, so I'm shocking yeah, in the Jason's, bar. Yeah, Jason. Yes. Oh. Um, I'm going to just go with water, thanks, water. Mate, or a soda water. Yeah. Oh, soda that'll, water? That'll do me tonight, right, yeah. Mate. That's fancy water. I love, I love fancy water. Yes. I can get you yeah. a soda Sparkling. Water. Or a... Yeah. with that? No. no. Straight up. I think it, it's like water that's put on a little bit of makeup. You know, like not too much, <laughs> but enough that you'll be like, yeah, alright. And it's actually, I don't get too disappointed whenever I go through a drive through at fast food with my kids. And um, you, you get a soft drink and a post mix is out because it's effectively just so much. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, well, I drink it. So, you know, oh, it's geez. basically, it's my standard, I guess. It's your standard. So, yeah, what are you having, mate? I'll go have a beer. Okay. Do it's it. Sort of always happening here. Are we cheersing first? We will. Absolutely. We'll do, we'll, we'll do that. Do you know how many Look nights? at this on tap. It's on tap, yeah. Oh, yeah. We don't do things in half in here. I love it. Not, this is actually really bad. If you lived here, you'd realise how bad this tap is. <laughs> Because you'd be using it all the time? Or? Yeah. We do spend a lot of time in here, socially. Um, we film in here occasionally. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I cheers. Thank you. Cheers, nice fellas. to meet you. Welcome to the shed. Good Thank luck for you. your water, mate. I'm looking yeah. forward to some good shed talk. Mm -hmm. Yes. So, let's start that off. Woo! Oh, so, here on a school night. Nando's you're, you're... had a tall vodka. <laughs> Is it strong? I don't know. No, I, I actually measured that one. Right. <laughs> no, right, right. Just in case. We do have a few Glen pours where it's just a bit of that, <laughs> bit of that, a bit more of that, and then it just comes out. I mean, the creations are amazing. Yes. Um, but I don't think they're standard drinks. <laughs> no, 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 no. And they probably become more fabulous about 30 minutes in, right? Yes, they like yes. it. Yes. Yeah. Even if it tastes bad, they still like it. It's good. Love yeah. It. And we've got a bell at the end of the <clears> bar, so. If once people get drunk enough, what they do is they come up oh, here and no. go like this and go... Love it. Do you know what that means? Taxi. Shots for everyone in the bar. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. So the person who decides to get drunk first, normally rings out and everyone else goes, Are you fucking shitting me? Oh. So then we're lining up fireballs. <clears throat> yeah, right. Anyway. Well, I have to admit though, even though I am a, a Russian, I have a, a two drink limit. That's my that's two. my jam. Yeah, nice. Yeah. That's good. Let's keep it sensible, you know? Yeah. yeah. So you're a Sydney girl. 
Well, or... actually, no. I um, I grew up in Emerald in central Queensland. I'm technically a country girl. Oh. Yeah. Uh, then I went to university in Brisbane. I spent a couple of years in Brisbane. Then I went back to Sydney, studied down in Sydney, yeah. came for a couple of years down there, came back up to Brisbane, um, did some work up here, then went back down to Sydney and was living there for the last kind of three years. Um, and then my comedy show, because I'm a comedian as well, went on tour. In case you didn't notice, yeah. guys. <laughs> in case you didn't notice. Yeah. Um, went on tour, and then Bob's your uncle. Pandemic yeah. happened. Yeah. And I've got family up this way, so I came up to Brisbane, Queensland, yeah. which ended up being the safest place pretty much on the planet. How long ago did you come up here? When shit had hit the fan, yep. I packed up everything. Like it was, it was a, oh, so like a it was a Tom Cruise like, <laughs> like you know, Mission Impossible situation. I have never felt more badass in my life. Yeah, really? it was like because I was watching what was happening overseas. I was watching what was happening in Italy. Who knows what was going to happen here, right? Yeah. So I thought if they shut all the borders. I had some cousins and things, but my, my immediate family were up in Brisbane yeah. and my parents and stuff for this year. So I thought if they shut it and we have the worst case scenario, there is no way I'm going to be able to get to them. Yeah. So, Which is almost what we're seeing now, I guess, down there, right? Yeah. Right. Mm. Um, so uh, when there was kind of umming and about whether they're going to shut the borders, um, I was on the phone to one of my girlfriends who lived up this way and she was like, come stay with me yep. until, you know, you sort yourself out. Yep. Um, my parents knew and no one else knew. So I called my real estate agent. Gave away my bond. I was like, what do you guys need? They're like, just your bond. They're like, sweet. Wow. Hired a car. Anything that fit in the car came with me. Anything that didn't, I <laughs> put it on the street and someone took it the next day. Wow. Oh, yeah, I, I full on stealthed it. It was <laughs> fucking brilliant. I have never felt so tough. So that's, that's almost life. like a, a drop the mic moment. Out of here, I'm just boom in the street. To the point. Sydney, I'm out. To the point where some people still don't know where I am. Like, oh, people are like, you're in the are tent you, shed. Are you like in Sydney? Because yeah. your, agent, your agent's been trying to get hold of you for a couple my, of weeks now. <laughs> my agent knows. My agent knows I'm up this way. Actually, that's probably the only person that really knew. But um, I just knew, like, appearances yeah. be, be damned. Like, yeah. you just gotta, you gotta go with your gut. And yeah, yeah, my gut agreed. And, totally. And um, you made the right call. Made the right call. Yeah. yeah. What just? Uh, sorry. <laughs> the irony is that I, yeah, I want to go back, but yeah. You know, the, sh the shit is hitting the fan down there. Oh, yeah, so. absolutely. <laughs> what did you study? What what's your, what did you go to uni for? You said um, you, you yeah. studied here in Brisbane and then down. Yeah, so I studied actually a Bachelor of Photography in, oh. in Brisbane. So yep. legit, you know, piece of paper that <laughs> cost an, an arm and a an leg in my firstborn child. Yeah. Um, but it ended up being really handy because I've pretty much been able to then, like, with um, promotions and making, like, my... Um, like movies, like I've done short films and things like yeah, that, yeah. Um, and even now writing, <laughs> even bizarrely through this pro. As much as I hate it when people say this, especially like white women on Instagram, but this pandemic has been a blessing. Um, <laughs> fuck, right? It's like a fucking pandemic, and people yeah. are like, make the most of it. Um, but I was the classic example of, yeah, I'll make the most of this. Like, yeah. this is my, this is the cards I'm dealt. What can I do? Yeah. And I was running into, which I'm sure we all have. And I think sometimes, like, and I'd love to delve into the conversation with you guys, but I think men are particularly bad with it, with not talking about how much is on their plate. Oh, and, yeah. and, and not, they're not actually activating like an outsource to be able to deal with it. Mm. And then everything getting too much. And then I didn't realize, and it wasn't until I came up this way, obviously everything was gone off my plate. I had to deal with everything that I hadn't dealt with. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. And also then have friends having commentary back to me going, thank God you were dealing with this shit because we actually thought you were on the verge of wow. breaking down. Because yeah. I was just go, go, <coughs> yeah. go. Yeah. I was doing group fitness classes as my main bread and butter. So I was starting at 5 a.m. Mm. Um, I would do a class session in the morning at lunchtime, I would write, um, then I'd do my lunchtime classes, yeah. and then I'd do my afternoon writing, then I'd do my evening classes, and then I'd have, like, on my back, you know, a change of clothes, shower, go straight to stand up, that would finish at, like... Jesus! Yeah, yeah, yeah. And this is, like, every day, the same routine? Pretty much, yeah. Wow. wow! And then I would get home, I'd probably, like, like, before 12 was a good night, and then Holy I'd be shit. up at 5 a.m. Yeah, dude, I was... Pushing it. Pushing the limit. What was your drive? Why were you doing that? What made you do that? Every I day? think, um, and I think everyone has like a catalyst in life that kind of changes you. Um, for me, it happened like in high school, actually. Um, I was severely depressed and I didn't really tell anyone about it because I was the girl that everyone kind of came to for help and all that kind of stuff. And she it's seemed fine. Right? Yeah, right. 
Um, and I was like, I was suicidal. I wow. had picked a couple of different times that that was going to happen, but if something happened that, you know, So you changed. had a plan. I had a plan. Oh, I went yeah. to school one day with, I don't know what I was thinking in my head, but you know, it was planned. I think I had four packets, like four packets of Panadol mm. and I was just going to take all of it and mm. go sit in the bathrooms and just, and I remember my thought was like, I wonder how long it would take for someone to to notice me that was my thought yeah because you feel and unheard you don't feel like you're even there like yeah 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 yeah, yeah. And that was and in high school this was in high school oh, yeah. this was grade 12 okay and i was in boarding school too and my and my mum was actually like she was going through um breast cancer at the time oh, yeah. you know it was just a so lot a i was trauma. the eldest like all sorts of things that were going on i just felt like i couldn't speak up mm -hmm. yeah. um and i said to myself that day if someone says hello to me and says my name, then I'm too broke. You know how you make you bet you, yeah, you gamble, you gamble is... a little bit. It's like this thing that you do with you know whether you believe in God, spirituality, life, yep. whatever, bigger power, it doesn't matter. You gamble with it, and you're like, if this thing happens, I won't. Wow. All right. Yep. I'm walking through the school halls, and this one guy, Daniel East, um, who was the most beautiful human being on the whole planet. He was the kind of guy that everyone kind of loved in that love-hate relationship. He was he was the, the classic Christian guy, but he was really like down to earth and like just loves like chatting with everybody. Yeah. I didn't even think he knew my name. Yeah. And as I was walking through, no one had said hello to me. I'm getting to my locker. I'm like, oh my God, like I'm so close, like five steps away. You're done. You're I, out of here. I was like so determined. And he tapped me on the shoulder and he's like, hey, Anissa, I hope you have a great day today. Wow. Huh. And I was like, two things. One, didn't know that guy knew my name. And fuck, now my plan is true, isn't it? What'd you do with the pen it up? <laughs> Got rid of it, actually. Yeah, no, yeah, yeah. Sorry, that was a bit... Um, but no, that's, but, that's serious. But yeah. I guess, too, like, that's, that's the start of that. And then, unfortunately, just after grade 12, um, just before Christmas, um, Daniel uh, died in a car accident. Oh. He was driving and um, his brother... His two brothers were in there. One survived and the other one didn't. Wow. Um, and it just rocked out. It rocked our year because of the way this guy was, right? He, yeah. you know. But because of that, and I'm not... This is why I want to talk about it. Because, and this is why I want to voice it. Yeah. Beautiful human being. But because of that, sometimes we put this ownership on ourselves to deliver because someone else couldn't. Mm. So I forever had this monkey on my back saying like, I have to now live life, to, even though I'm depressed, I've got to figure this out. I have to live life to the fullest because this guy who saved my life, who doesn't know he saved my life, yep. couldn't live his. Yeah. And that's fine to a point if that gets you out of shit. Mm. But this put me into like a momentum of like everything in life had to be done. Like, if there was an opportunity, I had to say yes. Yeah. Because I was afraid of the what ifs, what ifs, what yep. ifs. What if I didn't amount to that person that mm -hmm. I said that I would for this other guy? Yeah. Which wow. is not a way to live your life. No, it's a lot of pressure on you. A lot of pressure on me. Yeah. Um, and I didn't realize how much I was doing it. So when you say, like, what motivated you, mm. I had this internal clock in my head just ticking, going, if I don't yeah. do this yep. shit, yep. then I am not fulfilling this unsaid promise that nobody knows about. No, you that's know? right. And we do it in different ways. Like, I think for a lot of us too, it could be like family or young yep. kids. And yep. and there's nothing wrong with that because they're your priority. But yep. if it's getting to the point where it is ripping you into the ground, mm -hmm. right? And you're not going to come out on top of that. Yep. It can be a lot. Well, did, did you, sorry, sorry did you go? <laughs> I remember all these questions. <laughs> trying, just, yeah, trying, just trying to unpack that. Oh yeah. Um, so, so did that drive and that from back in in that senior year? Yeah. That stayed with you all the way until pretty much like when you left Sydney. So like yeah. even you were finding yourself doing all of that was that same voice, that same drive from high school. Yeah. Has that got you to that moment? Yeah, because people would say to me, "I can't believe the shit you've done." Yeah. And the reason why was because I had this drive. Like guys, I have done so much stuff like I've got uh, some of my photography has I've had my own self exhibition I've had my um, my wow. pieces being exhibited over in Germany and <coughs> well received in Germany I've um, I've done a Miss World competition and become oh, state, really? yeah state finalist in Queensland do you yeah. know why because of that whole thing of like this is an opportunity what if I world peace <laughs> world peace right <laughs> world peace. Um, but also that fascination of like how can I make commentary on this or how can I possibly deliver my thoughts on this if I've never experienced it yeah right. and then it was that drive of like okay well again it's not the forefront but it's so ingrained in me now that I'm like well if 
I've been given this opportunity to experience something that someone else couldn't. Yeah. You know, even if it's not, it doesn't align. But we do that sometimes. We kind of create this pressure behind ourselves because for some reason we're not enough. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We talk about that all the time, don't we? Mm. About yeah. how you're always <clears throat> chasing that next thing. Yeah. Even though, and we say you should be grateful about what you have now. And yeah. just stop and be grateful for what you're, you know, be grateful for us sitting here having this conversation. Yeah. You know, not, oh, well, next week we've got someone else in. But it must That's, be hard too. Like, do you find now that you've come out of Sydney, you've probably got like more time to like internalize or just be with yourself? Yeah. Do you find you still feel like, oh, I need to be doing more? Or do you, are you like, are you struggling with the fact that you've got more free time now? Like, you sort of go, how do I fill my day? I think feel, <laughs> if you talk to anyone, filling my day is not the issue. Okay. <laughs> still, um, like, so still, you're still, still driving, yeah? No, but prioritizing. Um, I think going through the pandemic in the way that I did and what I had to go through, and I did the fucking work. Like, and I think that's the thing that people don't realize is the work takes time and it's going to take as long as it needs to mm-hmm. for you to unpack whatever it is yep. and to get the help you need. And yep. I got to the point where, um, like, I was doing the work, I was like reading, I was trying to better myself, I was writing down things that like anything I could put my hands on that would help me sort of unpack why I was feeling this anxiety, apart from the fact there's a global pandemic going on, but like why am I feeling this anxiety built up in me of like why can't I accept that doing nothing is okay? Yes. Like why can't I accept that? I understand that. Mm. And it got to a point where um, I realized I was really (coughs) struggling and I sort of, I'm, I'm very... Um, open and honest about mental health um, yep. now because I think there's such power in it yep. and because of that I've just gone from strength to strength to strength and I've noticed that a lot of people want to gravitate and talk to me about it because I'm just like yeah let's be honest about it let's be yes. open about those things yeah. Absolutely. so when I realised I was struggling with what was going on in my, my life and my situation and by all means this is not a what was me no, I no. was very blessed with the outcome that I got um, but I was mentally struggling, so I said to my parents, I'm going to go see a psychologist. Yeah, good. Cool. Happy days. Which I've done before because I just think it's just a, such a great tool to have. Yep. Yeah. That someone who is not in the inner circle, that yep. doesn't know the ins and outs of your they life, judge you. they don't judge you. Yeah. It is just so, and you can find that in other places too, mm. but I'm just saying it's just so nice to have someone who has no idea. But they give you the right guided tools to use. Yeah. It's not like you've at a bar or you've at your mate's house and you discuss something <coughs> and they might say, oh, just do this and don't worry about that and do that, where the, the trained person gives you that right information and those tools that are correct to get you through that. Yeah. That's what I found when I went, like, you know, I'd be melting down inside and they're like, oh, just try this. And it might just be as simple as five-star breathing. When you feel this anxiety, just stop, start doing this. But they give you the right tools, is what I'm trying to say. And I then love, it's got I tools. love the sound effects of a cuckoo clock <laughs> when we're talking about essentially going crazy. Yeah. <laughs> just the, yes. the sound effects are on point. We um, used to turn it off, but when we had Paul Bird in here, <laughs> he's going, no, nah, you should leave it on. And ever since then, we've gone, all right, well, we'll leave it on and we'll leave it on. It just cuckoos at the yeah. most inappropriate times. I love yeah. it. I love it. it was, <laughs> that was also also appropriate because I think there is still this stigma that if I'm not having it all together and I'm thinking, you know, irrational, like irrational thoughts, whatever they might be to you, um, that I'm going crazy. Yeah. But the thing is to be human and the thing that I've learned and the readings that I've done and listening to other like uh, readings of philosophy and obviously psychology, psychology as well, um, is that to be human is to actually think of those darkest thoughts is to actually like, like, Almost shock yourself yep. into because if you don't think those things, if you don't go from those extremes to like you know um, death and all that kind of stuff, right through to like love and new life and experience, right? How can you possibly say you have empathy? Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's right. Like, how can you possibly say that you are delivering yourself as a true, multifaceted human being? Yeah. Right. The people that don't have empathy are psychopaths. <laughs> yes. That's you know, right. The exactly. people who don't have that emotional range yeah. and that emotional understanding are the ones that we are worried about in society. Yeah. yeah. If you are Most having definitely. that emotional range, you know, and you're thinking about those things, there's nothing wrong with you. No, it's yeah. just more how do you combat those and how do you get through the other side to make it healthy. Yeah, yeah but I think society's put us in such a box that you're not allowed to experience those things and voice them. Yes. Yeah. 
Yeah. You know, like it's it's yeah. almost shamed upon if you have gone, geez, I'm having an absolute shit day and I think everyone's nut job and rah rah, everyone goes, Jesus, what's wrong with him today? Yeah. Like even though you might be on that curve of yeah. of emotion. Yeah. I think that's, been... that's changing. I think Oh I definitely think it is changing. Because I mean yeah. yeah, you go back a few years and if you know someone was talking like we're talking now, it's like, oh my god, like we almost shun that person that you know, that person's got a problem and oh, I don't want to hear about that, I don't want to deal about that. It's yeah. like especially guys. Yeah. yeah. But but I think you know, conversations like we have in here and um, you know, that's one of the reasons we created the shed and yeah. um, raise money for charity. Uh, but yeah, I think there's a lot more, you know, even are, are you okay days and things like that are, yeah. you know, people can have a conversation, I think, with less stigma. I wouldn't say without oh, yeah. stigma. I, I think there's but less. There's less. less definitely. You know, I yeah. think hopefully yeah. we're heading down the right path. Yeah. I think, um, too, it comes down to the fact that, like, a lot of us don't have the, the tools and, and the understanding and the skill set of communication. Yeah. And that's where we really struggle. Because if you don't know how to communicate, these in a, in a way that is like I guess um, uh, not not diffusing, but um, like if you came in and just said, "Oh, I've had a shit day" or whatever it is, yeah. and it sounds attacking or aggressive, or it doesn't read the room or whatever, is anyone going to take you seriously from mm. that conversation? No. Yeah. So it's yeah. like it's like knowing how to have those conversations, and then also the person who's receiving those conversations knowing how to respond, mm. because the response, like when we are. You know, confessing how we're feeling or what's going on in our world or whatever. Most of the time, we're not actually asking for a response. We're not asking for a pat on the back. We're no. not asking for anything like that. We're just like, this is my burden, yep. and I need to get it out. out. You're yep. venting. What we say, venting, right? Yeah. Yep. Right. But there's like healthy venting, and then there's unhealthy venting. Yeah. And healthy venting is when you're like, this is what's going on with me. I'm not asking for a solution. You don't have to find one for me. I just want to let you know because this actually halves my pain. Yes, yeah. exactly. Most right. definitely, yeah. So, what, I, so I was to say, if you go back to when you were in school, then like knowing obviously what you know now, yeah. like we obviously learn through through life and the journey. Mm. Did you feel at the time when you were back in school, and you, you know, you, you obviously had a plan? You're talking about suicide at school, and if, mm. if that metric wasn't met, mm. right, which is incredible that it was, mm. um, did you feel like you had no one to talk to, no one, no support systems? Or did you feel so alone that that was? That's what you were doing? Like you... Yeah, I think I think half of it was um, that <laughs> I think the majority stemmed from the fact that I was a, I'm a very creative person. And yeah. I think um, with creativity comes that really large and uh, expressive void of emotional depth because you have to, I always say like, I, I comedians are some of the most depressing people on the planet. Well, yeah. 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 Um, because and I, like I've learned to be healthy from that, but I've always, <laughs> even before I started doing stand up, I'm like comedians are the most depressing people on the planet yeah. because they need to know those depths in order to make light of the situation. Yeah. You know what I mean? That's so right. and that's when that's when people connect because they're like, yeah. holy shit, I have felt that, yeah. Yeah. and like, oh, how great is it to laugh about this? Yeah. But if that person doesn't feel that way or has never connected to that, how can they possibly make light of the situation? Yeah. Yeah. The difference being, though, is that how do you create like such a healthy understanding of what those thoughts are and understanding that they're thoughts, yeah. not facts, mm. and being able to un establish your reality of your thoughts versus you know the situation yeah because the situation can change quite quickly and yeah. we know for a fact that like our thoughts can change quite quickly yeah you know mindset, right? exactly yeah. you know you're having a shit day and your mates come around and give you beers all of a sudden yeah, yeah. hey Got yeah, a great day. yeah. Well, someone gives you a tap on the shoulder and says hey exactly. hey knows your name exactly. that's right you turn around and go, right. changes your mindset oh, right. like that yeah so you're creative that's what i was going to say Look, everything you've said so far um, it sounds like you're naturally creative and you've had that from a, from a young age, right? So mm. obviously comedy, um, you said you've, you've done some short films. So yeah. you start in those or produce those or written I, those? I've what was done the... so many things. So um, <coughs> my like when I was young, I, I started with dancing and music and things yep. like that. And I think when you're learning stuff like classical music, it's, it's quite like, I think that's the, the interesting thing and now that I've unpacked like more the creative mind and even talking to one of my psychologists and I think she that was the moment where I was like holy shit she just said something so real she's like creatives I think find it really hard because they have all this imagination that yep. they want to share with people right but no one lives in their head mm -hmm. yep so yep. what I see 
and once I actually, once she explained this to me, I was like, oh my God, this makes so much sense. Why I feel this distance? Because what I saw and what I wanted to create, no one else could see. Yeah. Until I created it. Yeah. Right? That's right. So talking to someone like mid creation or something like that, you know, I'd always get that, you know what you should do. Yeah. And you're like, no, 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 I know, <laughs> no, I know what I'm doing. Exactly. Please don't. Please don't. <laughs> yeah. Piss off. And then, so I've got it painted in my head. Yeah. yeah. Like, don't redo my painting. For yeah. Reason. Yeah. Which is fine if you're <laughs> if you're seeking advice, but if you're not, like, it yeah, can when, really yeah. be detrimental. Yeah. Because then you start second guessing your thoughts. Which you is know? your own ability. Which is yeah. your own ability. But I think a lot of entrepreneurs would, would deal yeah. with that as well. They got yeah. a business idea. Here's the concept. Like you know, let's go back to. You know, anyone who might have started like Airbnb. Mm. You know, you hear those stories and you read those stories of those guys saying, hey, listen, what we want to do is we want to start like basically an accommodation platform. Yeah. But we want you to open your room up to people or this. And like the amount of times that they would have had that in their their head. I mean, look, I, I must admit, I have a billion ideas yeah. as well, right? I'm probably a bit like you as a creative and yeah. uh, I've, I've got something for you shortly. We've got I'm a new so segment. We've got a new, <laughs> a new segment. Um, but, but I think, yeah, like somebody who's doing something like Airbnb must have come along and go, I've got this idea, it will work, this is how I see it. Yeah. But then when they've gone out to do funding or talk to a, you know, an investor or another business person, be right. stupid idea, stupid idea. And the yeah. Ubers of the world would have been the same. Yeah. All of those, like nobody's ever going to do that. Yeah. No one's ever going to get in a car with a stranger and, and do that. You know, nobody's... Yeah. But they had that painting, that vision in their head mm -hmm. and... A bit like you're saying about what you're doing as a creative. That's yeah. your vision. If you stick to it and deliver that, yeah. and I think that's what these entrepreneurs and, and you know people are doing is going. This is my vision. They're not being persuaded or dissuaded by negative comment or other people going. Well, that shit. You're never going to make that. That's yeah. not going to happen. And that that's got to be hard <coughs> mentally when people are saying to you, "Well, that's a shit idea," and you're like, "Hold on a minute. This is yeah, yeah, yeah." yeah. I think it's um because I also work like I also have some businesses in the, in the entrepreneurial space as well. Like you know. <laughs> she talented um, <laughs> uh, but I think that I've noticed in that entrepreneurial space too they've started talking more about mental health because it's such a lone road yep. right and it doesn't matter it doesn't matter if it's business it doesn't matter if it's creative hey if you've got your own visions of your family and your future mm. right and what that looks like and it goes against the grain yep. as soon as it goes against the grain of what other people have experienced Again, humans are fascinating. It's mm. like a right or wrong answer, right? There's no gray. Yep. So when you go against the grain, it's obviously wrong yep. because they've never experienced it before. That's all right. And that's when people shut down and that's when people don't talk, right? And that's when I felt isolated as a creative. I was like, well, I'm not sharing my ideas with anybody. I'm going to live in my own head, yeah. which as we know, Dangerous. Dangerous. Yeah. <laughs> we go back in our last, our, our last episode, the guest we had in here was a former co-host because we had a car show. We yeah. did it 12 years ago. Um, and it was like a bucket list show for us. Right? Yeah, we yeah. were doing Segway racing, mates, driving Lambos yeah. and Ferraris around, going up in planes, flight simulators, you know, you name it. We were having a ball good. and we were filming so it. Good time. Right, it was great. So, <laughs> yeah, and, um, you know, we had him in here and we were talking about that. And a lot of people, I think, when we were doing that at the time is, oh, you just want to be like Top Gear. Yeah, or you just we did cop a lot of that. We're, hey? we're like, no, we're not. We're not them. Like we yeah, were. Yeah, yeah. We're a we're, getaway slash Top Gear slash. Exactly. You know e what I mean? Everything like we, we could do on the show, we you could go and do. Yes, we try to give people options for experiences. It but was yeah. It wasn't was talk show idea. host driving a, a an undrivable Bugatti that you know yeah. there's only five in the world and. No, we started doing stuff like going out and do V8 experiences at Queensland Raceway or yeah. going doing tourist things on the Gold Coast or we'd fly to Singapore for the Grand Prix and go luging and stuff. So it was a bit like, yeah, getaway meets a car show, meets a bucket list show. Yeah. yeah. And in the end, that's all we were doing is going, that was fun, what do we do next? Yeah. 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 So I think like in, in line with that, there are no original ideas. Right? No, that's right. But people only know what they've experienced. Yeah. Yeah. So the only time when you're giving someone a new idea, and we do this in, in filmmaking and in movies too, like when I pitch a movie yeah. idea, I still have to give them a comparison. Yeah. I'm still like, oh, it's, you know, uh, Fifth Element meets John Wick, like, yeah. so that they have an idea in their head of where they can place you. Yeah. And sometimes it can be to people's detriment because they don't realize what they're doing is they're actually pigeonholing an idea and they're not uh -huh. letting people you know, flourish yeah. and, and experience. Because 
yeah, it, it could have been similar to those shows because it had those elements. Mm -hmm. yeah. But at the end of the day, it didn't have you guys. Like, you're yeah. you're not. Who, what was it? What was the? Was it, who did the getaway show? Oh, like Katrina Roundtree. Oh, okay. oh yeah, Katrina. <laughs> they, they had like a, a car. Yeah, yeah, right? yeah, 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 yeah. And I'm like, I think a cool yeah, field, bland but... and boring. Sorry. Yes. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I think you're onto something there yeah. because every time you look at the staple networks, and I think you know more and more people are moving away from the networks and they're watching us on YouTube. Yeah. Um, <laughs> no, they're not. How not, many? Not, sort of. Not, well, people. They will be watching. They will. Not come back around. <laughs> How many times though do you see when the network does something, they roll out that poster person, or if they're bringing in a new show? Oh, the host is someone from that staple all the time. Yeah. Mm. yeah. And I prefer to watch shows like when I discover things. On, on Netflix or you know even if Apple's doing something like you know they've released some um, you know, for all mankind and then I'm looking at these actors I don't know none of them oh, it's yeah. a, I sit it's there and go I love it because I'm beautiful piece of work that um, yeah. that yeah. advertising actually because what they're starting to do is they're kind of I, I just noticed it because uh, a couple of people I like aspire to you know work with uh, in those ads so we've got Benjamin Law I think we've got um, uh, Joel Edgerton and I oh who else was in there couple of other like Aussie upcoming like music artists and yep. things like that. Um, so for those of you who don't know, playing at home, um, the Apple uh, new ad release is looking and what they're doing is they're localizing areas mm -hmm. and they're starting to also go specific into who they're talking to. So it's no longer about, you know, how big a name is known. It's like, yep. let's talk to that, that you know, collective yeah. that follow that person and yeah. let's get on their level, which I think is so much more powerful yeah. um, than being like, oh yeah, everyone knows this person. Yeah. Yeah. You know, let's like, do this. And I think, I mean, personally, I turn off when I have the same, oh, I'm not going to mention any names in the industry, but every time you see something, oh, there's a benefit hosted by that person. There's yeah, a, that yeah, person. Yeah, there's yeah. The, and you sit there and go, really? You've yeah. got, you've got one person yeah. all the time. And if you don't gel or, you know, um, connect. sort of connect with that person yeah. just switch off right it's it's unfortunate I think, because I think still in the commercial space they're looking at like what ratings deliver absolutely. and because it's they business because yeah. they have a backlog of this person potentially delivering mm -hmm. that's what they go with because it's yep. safe yeah and exactly. being a producer myself I can understand that from a risk perspective yes yeah. but also being a producer myself I understand that People can only handle so much, mm -hmm. and then they get fucking bored, and they <laughs> yeah. get sick of this shit, yep. for lack of a better you know, yep. term, yep. phrase. Yep. Um, and we need new ideas, and we need, like, look at, um, have you guys watched That's What I Reckon no. on... Nah. <laughs> YouTube. Um, that's what I reckon. It's called Nat's what I reckon. Oh, Nat's what I reckon. Nat's what I reckon. reckon. He's okay. sort of blown up. He um he's uh, I guess uh sim like in in essence similar to you blokes like blokey bloke went around to uh, to car shows and did commentary and all this sort of stuff. Bit of a comedian yeah. and um really like just just a top fella kind of kind yep. of thing. Um, you know, tats, long hair, like you know, getting into it. And then pandemic happened, and he started doing um, cooking show. Oh, right? oh, hold on, I might have heard right? this guy. And he swears, and yes. his whole thing is getting rid of jar sauce, right? That you don't want to do jar sauce. Getting, yes, yes. Getting rid no, of jar so like, sauce. it's not that fucking hard. You just make pasta. Yes. <laughs> so in this, is that the yeah. guy? Yeah, that's the guy. Okay. And he's like, cut up the potatoes. Nice. Yeah. I don't care how you fucking cut them up. Yeah, yeah. Do yes. nice. Fucking just up. chop them. Oh, yeah, 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 he's yeah, great. Right. He's great. Right. Yep. But like now he's sort of blowing up, and they're starting to. I think they're going to put him on ABC and all this sort of stuff oh, right now. I think. Yeah, oh, yeah. Yeah. oh yeah. Anyway, but he's got his own cooking book, like oh. everything. But the thing is, he is not like any other cooking show mm -hmm. we have fucking seen before. No. And how refreshing exactly is yeah. that? But do you and think he's going to start getting that? Oh, you're a cop out now. You've gone to a commercial network. You've gone away from your roots, and you're now. I I think know, people are too people are too um, protective of the idea of what they want their people to be. Mm. Yeah. Right. At the end of the day, the guy's an entertainer. Yep. Let him fucking do his job. That's all right. He so sounds pretty funny. Oh, he's great. You look it up. Not, yeah, look him up. Yeah, I yeah. think I think yeah, if we find him, we actually might add him into the comments below in yes. the video so other people can find him. Please, it. Yes. please. That sounds hilarious. Um, um, my my brother's done a couple of his recipes, huh? and can I just say, <laughs> my brother is going to be a ladies' killer because his recipes, <laughs> like. Oh, really? I can imagine him so in the kitchen annoying. there. You'll get a girl around and go, just cutting up the fucking you know, <laughs> yeah. onions yeah. anyway. Yeah. It doesn't matter. I'm just cutting them up, but I'm just doing. Yeah, but it's like like it's legit. 
tastes like it tastes good. Yeah, it's good food. yeah, yeah, that's yeah. awesome. So um, well, that's a good way to get the message across, right? Because when we had Paul Bird in here, we know, like on his show, yeah, he does a lot of things, and he goes, look, you know. Really simple out and about. Like, this is how you crumb your own fish. Yeah. Just bag of this flour, egg, bit of water. You know, like does it there and then drops them into the oil. And when they float to the top, they're done. Plates them up and look at it and go, "Wow, how easy mm. is that?" Yeah. Instead of going getting the frozen fish out of the, the <laughs> thing and sticking that in the air fryer and then and tipping knowing, that out. And knowing it's frozen fish, just yeah. knowing. How, <laughs> it, like how good it looks. How you're easy just like, it is. All right, look. So yeah. I'm, I'm going to jump right. into this this segment idea that we've put together. So <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, not me if this goes back. All oh, right. I right. See. So it's all. It's this all is all the creative side of the show. It's, uh -huh. it's all on me. I'm a, I'm a bit like <laughs> you. Teamwork. Teamwork. You go down with ship, man. You go down with ship. It's all on me. <laughs> yeah, editor, producer, executive producer, marketer, like the whole lot. No, that feeling. Um, <laughs> exactly. Like, and and like, I've done short films. I've produced, edited, written stuff. It's a lot of work. It, it is, yeah. yeah. Yeah, like even... Like, oh, like, even Neutral, when we did that, like, we'd go along and film <laughs> and have fun. Yeah. This poor guy would be at home for like, hours and hours editing and... Making... Well, like, what's it going to be up, Chase? <laughs> yeah. You know, and you're yeah. like... I get that now. Yeah. Still do. I mean, but like that's. I mean, that's something that I've always loved doing. You know, I've done a lot of. Um, we did shit TV when I was like thirteen. Remember that? <laughs> we, we, we did. We shot. A we should put a bit of that in the shit yeah. TV. Yeah. We, we shot animations. I want to see this. Yeah, yeah we, stop we did stop motion. Yes, yes. Um, with figurines, and we'd spend the weekend moving them a yeah. millimeter you know at what? a time. Can I just say too? This is another thing that we kind of lose in our life, in our adulthood. Now, and I've started talking about it a little bit more, but. We, we lose this innocence of being a child. Mm, yeah. And when we get it back, oh, yeah. it is just joyous, yeah. right? Like talking about that then and yeah. just having these moments. Mm -hmm. And we sort of like, I don't know, we suppress it in our everyday life. And it, I think it's really important that you find it in whatever it we is. We do a lot of reminiscing yes. on this show. Yeah. But well, what <laughs> I love though right. right. is, is exactly. when we did that stuff. It um, does. Makes you happy. So yeah, I've smells, done a back. lot of commercial yeah. stuff in the background, like, you know, for, for big companies and basically freelance cameraman pretty much my whole life so I've got a day job but you know do all these other projects um, but when we were doing that stop motion that was on old um, like VCR. V VCR so we couldn't do like photography oh, frame by frame oh, we were literally oh, and you got your hand in there oh, and, fuck. and the link the <laughs> rewind <link. laughs> find the point stop record exactly. but some of the frame oh, rates Jesus. were different based on how long we would hit start and stop and and all Have of you this. still got any of that? Oh, Sorry. Yeah, yeah. No, no, this is great. <laughs> I think I've got, I've, I've even got the characters, like I've kept those Can characters. Can we put a, in the, a bit of that in oh, the text? I'll find it. Yeah, that's <laughs> it's, it's awesome. It's in my archive roll. Yeah. I'm real somewhere. Um, but I shot like, it's funny the things that you do, because I had a lot of this pro camera gear, I shot one short film, mm. um, and I don't think anyone's actually seen it. It's on YouTube, it's called Mondays, right? Yeah. Oh, I've seen it. You've seen that Yeah. One? Link, we'll link it below. It is, yeah. yeah. It, <laughs> it is, and like, and this is a set, I don't know, like, I haven't seen your comedy act, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But my humour is really dry, yeah. as you're probably, you're going to find out shortly. Dad jokes. Um, no, Fuck well, dad jokes it. more. Do you love them? I, I, I call myself the dad joke queen. Oh, oh, nice. oh we'll have a dad oh, joke off, right dad off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Dad off, yeah. Um, <laughs> so, but this this short film, I thought, I had this concept, right, and I didn't enter it anywhere. I thought mm -hmm. it may be one of those things I'll keep on the shelf and then when the category comes up, I can submit it. But basically, it was will you me. Take, it was, will you take it in on your walking it stick? Was, it's in my frame. Yeah. It, was a, it was a single camera. I just moved around the house. And it was basically a morning sequence of my alarm going off, getting up. There's a bit of a nude scene in it where I go and have a shower, clean my gotta teeth, give, get dressed. The <laughs> then, you know, I've done things like the, the camera's in all the fridge, yeah, yeah. open the fridge and grab the milk out, you know, all these cut all the really creative stuff sitting there. And it was boring as, <laughs> right? Deliberately. Yeah. And the whole thing is this mundane routine go out to the garage, get in the car, and yeah. just put the key in the ignition, the radio comes on. And it's something like, it's a um, beautiful Monday morning here in the city, fantastic day to have a sleep in on a long weekend. And yeah. then I get out of the car, slam the door, go back in and that's it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's basically you've gone through this entire mundane, mundane drag your ass out of bed to get in the car and realise it's a public holiday. Okay. Nice. And that was it. You know? Nice. So that's... Simple concept. Everyone can understand. Yeah. 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 What, what are your short films? <coughs> oh, look, I'm, I oh, haven't seen man. anything. Well, I've done no research like yeah, we spoke yeah. about um, earlier. But... My short film, so one that kind of, I guess took off um, was one called Reality Check and I just found it really interesting 
Um, a lot of my work, so when I talk about my comedy, I talk about how it is um, to empower women and mm -hmm. to inspire men. So I never like, I, I think I always hated it when I would see female comedians get up on stage and just berate men. Mm -hmm. And like, and I just yep. thought there's, there's no, there's no future in that. Like there's no driving yep. together as a collective in that. So I wanted to create my comedy about um, sort of like, yeah, empowering women to, to be themselves. Right, um, and to own that because I think sometimes we're put on this pedestal of like, but you're a woman, or mm. you're a mother, or whatever it might be. Yeah. And like, <laughs> mothers still have dirty thoughts all the time. <laughs> um, I think uh, there's a couple of Facebook pages. Oh, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm like, women are the worst. You think men are dirty? Men just say it out loud. Women. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, so, yeah, and then I wanted to like inspire men in terms of like, you know, maybe shining the light on behavior that maybe women don't really like. Okay. Okay. Um, yep. So like one of my favorite jokes uh, is, uh, do you guys mind if I do it? Yeah, yeah, go. Yeah, okay. go for it. All right. Yeah. I love it. I love it when a guy <laughs> sends me a photo of his hard erect penis in his hand. You guys know this, right? Dick pic. Yeah. yeah. Dick you pic. Experience, you've experienced a dick pic I've before. Not, yes. Well, yeah. There we go. Not, Honesty. Not, not, dick pics not in the house. Not sent one, but I obviously know. Okay. Okay. <laughs> before. Okay. Before you like. Uh, you know, before you like. Sorry, this, yes. this is a bit gross. Right? <laughs> yeah. Before you like, this is a bit gross. I just want to say, like, I love it. I love it because I look at that photo and I get to learn so much more about him. You know, I look at that photo and I think to myself, "Wow, you're left-handed. So am I." <laughs> Creative souls, right? Creative souls. <laughs> I get to like zoom in, have a look around his bedroom, see what he's into, yep. you know? Turns out he's a Jackson Pollock fan. <laughs> no, that's just come on the walls. Oh. But he's creative, guys. He's creative. It's his he's outlet. <laughs> so, yeah. So just from that, you sort of see like, this is the behavior we experience. Yeah. But yeah. On, I like to flip it and show yeah. like, hang on. Like everyone goes like, oh, unsolicited dick pic. Like, what does that mean? Yeah. Yeah. And I'm like, let's just flip that for a moment and sort of say like, Hey, look at this behavior. It's not wanted by all women. No, yeah. However, if I am going to receive this, I'm going to show you what this could potentially mean. Yeah. Right? Yes. And so, it's, so it's like to say, like, hey, women, you're allowed to enjoy these things. Yes. Like, I'm enjoying this moment because I get to talk about it in such a way. Yeah. Yeah. But also, men, just so you know, we this do is, laugh at you. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> this is the experience, right? So that's kind of how I write my jokes. It's kind yeah. of like to sort of flip it on its head of the experience of yeah. of sometimes yeah. what women get. Um, and it's never to berate men because I think it comes it, like any behavior. It is learnt, right? Yeah. Mm. Any behavior is learnt. Um, how? Because when you're born, <laughs> you don't all of a sudden like, know the knowledge of the universe and mm. how to interact with humans. No, yeah. you learn that by That's watching exactly right. and who you aspire to look up to in your life, right? right? So someone above you in generation, whether it's your family member or someone around or whatever, fucked up. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> you know. I've never done it. No. I don't care. I love it how they're like, oh no, 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 no. No, 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 I'm having a joke with someone about something, so I actually went and Googled, you know, big black penises or something. <laughs> Got this massive one, and I sent that in the chat. Yeah, yeah, Just yeah. To, to gauge your response, but yeah, you know, never sent my own, only some anonymous. <laughs> what, it's not what? Someone think... else. <laughs> no. But yeah, just the biggest response I got, because uh, my, my comedy show that was touring was called Dear Future Ex-Husbands. Yeah. And, um... <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. I always like the titles. The next one, I'm, the next one I'm um, working on is called Lethally Blonde. Oh, a danger to myself. Are you, um, are you doing them in Brisbane? A danger to myself is the tagline. Are you doing them in Brisbane? And can we come? Um, I'm Does, hoping. I'm hoping to. I'm Brisbane's got working. a festival on. Yeah, the comedy like festival. Month, oh, yeah, but everything's sort of happening. It's, it's really hurting that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you can go, I don't know when this is going up, but if yeah. it's still on and people can go, please buy tickets and go yeah. because um, it really is. Oh, I think all, any any time, get out and support. Like, yeah. And you saw Absolutely. I was probably sitting awkwardly when you were doing that joke because I hate being in the front row at a comedy venue. Oh. Um, and I was just sort of sitting back down because I'm always just intrigued of like, where's this going and yeah, the, the yeah, art of it. Yeah, yeah. Am I and be... I don't want to be a target. So sometimes I just sit awkwardly at the front, like, yeah. just ignore me. I'm just trying to see where this is going. Yeah. Um, and a, a real quick funny story. So this new new segment we've sort of come up. Yeah, 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 10 yeah, minutes that's later. What, that's right. Back yeah. to it. Back, back to, to it. Back to work, Jets. Back to work. 
this is how we roll. It's either called as a like um, second opinion or the pitch, right? Okay. So we're gonna pitch a few ideas to you. Because right. you're a producer, right? I so, am. so and right. these are legitimate oh. ideas. These are. are things, like I said, like that are, are on our radar or my radar. That's what or, Jason's come up with. Of, yes. of things that <laughs> can be. And, and so what's my role? Am I shark tacking this? Yes. This well, you're just sort of thumbs up, thumbs down. Whether yes. it's got legs, or you think it's a brilliant idea. Yeah. Whether you're gonna steal it. <laughs> Whether you're going to steal it <laughs> or not, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's out, in the, it's out in the public domain, right? Love it. So right. this is those. And I'll come back to a comedy <laughs> story in LA story. Remind me, because that was hilarious. Do you want to run it down so we don't forget? No. Well, we'll run out of time and then it'll just be yeah. five seconds. I've just discussed it. It's useless. All right. Okay. Yeah. So here's the project ideas, right? So the first one is an environmental podcast where an interviewer conducts interviews with owners of fake businesses. Right, so it's a very serious, imagine a very serious interviewer, mm -hmm. and then the person on the other end. So I've got some businesses as examples. Mm -hmm. right? Hit me. Um, a, a clothes peg repair business. So someone who actually goes around and, and restores clothesline pegs, clothes yeah, pegs yeah. from lines and yeah, re-springs yeah. them and et cetera like that. <laughs> yeah. um, the, another business is a, um, a soap scrap rescue and recycling company. Get that last little bit of soap, repack it. What right, about the pubic hair? Um, that's actually legit, by the way. Is it? Oh, really? Damn yeah. It. How do they get rid of the pubic hair? Um, so they clean the soap. Oh. Yeah, it's, it's the legit. Clean the soap with yeah, soap they find oh, in other locations? Yeah. Or do they clean the soap with soap they haven't? And here I was think, <laughs> thinking that had... Sorry. But then they clean... But for serious note, <laughs> yes. there's actually... Um, do that. Uh, yeah, I can't remember what the company's called, but I found it really fascinating. So, so you basically donate those scraps? Yeah, the scraps. And they, really? they clean the soap and they rebar it and they um, send it to... Well, like, okay, that's off the list world. because there's no, only been so far list. out there that yeah. nobody would do that. So right. they send it to third world countries that have issues so, with Oh, really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, that's lovely. Yeah, sorry, yeah. scrap that. Okay. Next. So we got one. So I, I, don't, I don't think anyone's doing the peg... Peg mm. one. You know, I yeah. like that idea. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. So, but then the other one is a lint miller who um, makes clothes from lint collected off jackets and belly buttons. I mean, people do that with dog hair, don't they? <laughs> yeah, but yeah, lint. Yeah, it just be blue lint jackets, James. Look at me, I'm wearing okay. myself. Would it be blue yeah. jackets? So, what do you reckon of that as a, as a, as a concept? A podcast, do you think people would tune in and, and listen? I think people would, especially if you had someone who was really hippie and down with, like, you know, recycling everything and was into, you know, like, you'd have to have, like, a legit host mm. that, like, you just knew... Um, you know, says all these amazing things, but probably just talk shit out of their ass. Well, the concept <laughs> would be the interviewee or the the person with the business would be like a comedian or something who would almost yeah. be like a, I guess what would you call it? Um, just ad living on the spot, yeah, throwing yeah, questions. Yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, like I've got this, and not only do we restore pegs, I've I, got this. I think what would make it. I think what would of, make know, it even more fun <clears throat> is like. Um, if you, I don't know, you told the host or whatever it might be. Because I think the host would cl clue in at some point, like, this is shit. Well, <laughs> it's all scripted. Of course. Like, okay. well, as in, <laughs> the questions great. are scripted and it's basically it's meant to be a serious interview, but on topics that are so bullshit yeah. and far out there. It, it so but be, it's done, it's it would, done as if it's legit. It would be so, yeah, I was going to say, it would be so great too if you opened up, like, you know, the board for people to, like, you know, be a part of the show and there's like yeah. one business that's actually legit yeah and, oh, oh, there we go there's and, a twist and, see and the there audience has to no, no, like no, no, no. yeah which out of these three here we go so we've now yeah. got which out of these three businesses is legit, is legit. Yeah. yeah the soap one was see. legit well done yeah, we see, yeah. i wouldn't have picked I that like yeah. that see i would have picked see, the and that's repair. fun because you're like mm. Yeah, all fucked. Like, yes. 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 It's like, oh, here, here's my um, 10 things I've done in my life. Which one is not real? Or which yeah, yeah, one's yeah. Yes. yeah. Okay. Like so, it. so that one, there's a variation on that. So it's still yeah. got legs. You can work on that. Yeah, all yeah. right. Se second in one. In development. Go on. The second one. Um, silence the musical. I see where you're going with this. <laughs> mm. Um... Think not, an un, not an unheard of concept because have you heard of three minutes 18? Three minutes 18? Three minutes 27. Three minutes 27. No, 343, you, I think, was a piano Oh, 343, song. yeah. It, was, it didn't play anything. It didn't play anything. Yeah. yeah. Sorry, 343. How does that become 317 was when I was born. That's why I know that one. Yeah. Three what? <laughs> I said 317 was when I was born. When you were born. Yeah. Mm. Oh, so three, yeah. Don't knock it because these are legitimate ideas, right? And obviously someone's done it. So as crazy yeah. as they sound, they've got... Yeah. Could you imagine that though in Brisbane on the side of the um, performing like, arts complex? Would you still silence the musical and but people would going, you no still music. have people come up on stage and just be like, <laughs> mimes? You have mimes. Let's just say it hasn't progressed past the <laughs> title. Know. That's just the word. Because I, I think that would be that itself would be interesting because people would just be like, 
what story did you get out of that? Yeah. You'll be like, yes. I thought it was about a love affair against blah, 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 and blah, blah, blah. Yeah. And he'll be it's like, oh, I actually, story yeah, I actually thought Joe Boggs was, you know, yeah. dealing drugs. You know, like... Yeah, yeah. So that's all, done off, all done off site rather yeah. than sound. So that would be interesting. Another one that's actually got... That'd be a good thing. podcast right. too, Jace. All right, so here's, here's another no. one. This is, this is one of my favourites, right? And as a comedian, like, feel free to use this. <laughs> sure. This, this one is... <laughs> you a, don't use this on the show we come to watch, we're going to be angry. No. no. This, and, and this one here, I'll, I don't know what it is. hopefully I don't have to explain it, but it's an impressionist comedy act uh -huh. using towels as the wardrobe. Right? Yeah. And then you use a towel, so it's one towel. One towel. To to do a series of impressions. Okay? Such as, you know, you can be a superhero with a cape, you can be a wizard, you could be Rocky, Jesus, an Arab, a, a monk, yep. a professor, a Roman. Right? Now in pretty much most of those the towel is in the same position. <laughs> <laughs> it's just the delivery of the dialogue that makes Oh, that's dialogue. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, you know what I mean? Like, so like, you sit there in your towel over your head, and the towel, you could be like you're a boxer in a robe, or you could yeah, then yeah, be yeah, Jesus, yeah, right? Yeah. So the comedic goal I see in that is that the towel is really just in the same position, and it's just different words or phrasing to make somebody look at that and go, Yeah. Oh, this guy's yeah. rocking. Yeah, it's really it's probably rocking preschool or kindies where kids want to dress up. You know, they can just get a <laughs> towel and do it. Um, thoughts? Yeah. Thoughts. Yeah, yeah, I was going to say, every toddler in the universe has done this. <laughs> so yes. I feel like it's done. Mm, I feel yeah. like it's done. You feel it's done? I feel like but it's done. But has it been done on a, you know, on on a stage, stage with think... paying audience? Could you see that as an opener to your act? Um, <laughs> my, I mean, I can talk about the show because it's done now, but my opening act for my show was um, a skit that I wrote, and my, my opening act, Sam Menzies, bless his cotton socks, he read it, and he was like, are you fucking serious? I'm like, yeah, yeah, we're doing this. So he did his set, and then he does this thing where he introduces me, yeah. and I don't come on stage, and he's like, oh. He introduces oh. me set again, and he's like, oh, she's not coming on stage. And then he goes back, and he gets me, and we do this little quick dialogue on stage. He's like, niece, like, are you? the crowd's waiting, like, can you come on stage? And I'm like, yeah, sorry, I'm late, like, I was just on a date. And he's like, you wore that? And I was like, yeah. Oh, this is all backstage, right? Yeah, so yeah, 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 yeah. And he's like, you wore that on a date? And I was like, yeah. And he goes, all right then. I was like, well, come on, like, chop, chop, let's go. He's like, you go wear that. I'm like, yes! Anyway, he gets back out stage, he introduces me, and I come out in a fucking wedding dress. <laughs> <laughs> Did you do the whole show in a wedding dress? I, I take it off at one point, right. because it it was intentionally, I made the wedding dress so it actually wouldn't come up, like it wouldn't zip up. Right. So there's like bits of straps across the back that I've like tacked on, because um, you know it still doesn't fit yet, and I turn around and show the audience and they lose their shit. Right. And I said, that's because I've still got integrity and... Um, <laughs> Oh, oh, and it. like you know, and self worth to lose. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> as all women, yeah. yeah. So yeah, and then I end up taking it off, and then I do a whole strip tease, and it's got layers and everything. I still, like, <laughs> still got a fucking thing. I got a strip tease. I got a you know a thing on underneath. And I took a strip tease, and I go, oh fuck, um, all these layers. I think this is why gentlemen have issues with flaps. And then <laughs> anyway, so I love, I like making these sort of commentary yes. like, posts, and, like yeah. That's good. Um, so, but the biggest comment I've ever, like the biggest compliment I've ever received was, I think a lot of the men actually came up to me whose girlfriends have brought them along or, you know, wives have brought them along to the show and um, they were the ones coming up to me going, oh my God, when you said the thing about the boat shoes, <laughs> I knew exactly what my missus was doing. Yeah. Um, and all this sort of stuff and just like, they actually fell in love with the show more and, and, and sort of said things to me like, oh, I don't find females funny, but uh, you're pretty funny. Yeah. Uh, like, back here, the compliment. But yeah, like, well, thanks, man. Um, yeah. Thanks, man. But what they're saying is like, I haven't found the content of female comedy yet yeah, that yeah. I relate to. Yeah. And yeah. what I found in yours is that, you know, I relate to what you're saying. Yeah. So that, that's, that's, that's Sounds where, good. Yeah. So to answer that question then, it's, it's not going to be an no. opening No. <laughs> Damn it, Damn I practiced that one in front of the mirror so Dang. many times, you can imagine. <laughs> Alright, so and then the fourth one. I practice my dick pics in front of the mirror. I think that's a good thing. Yeah, thanks. Yeah. Yeah. Try and yeah. try and try. Get the angle. Do you run a filter? <laughs> It just has these like angel wings of like love hearts just like floating around it. Or it's like a sausage, it's in a bun, you know. Oh, actually, have you guys seen, um, uh, there's a, I guess he's an actor comedian, um, Sam Cotton. Uh, no. He's got some great stuff on, like I think he's on YouTube, he's on all sorts of things. And um, he's an Aussie guy and he's just done these little snippets and he does animations over the top. Oh. So he has like, 
he's great. He does this one where um, you know, like seagulls are running around and they're like, "Oh, can I have a chippy bay?" Yeah, I think I'll, I'll see that. And one, he yeah. just does such great shit. Anyway, again, yeah. link it below. Link it below. <laughs> exactly. Right. Right. So, exactly. You'll have a good laugh. So yeah, the fourth, laugh. the fourth one um, is two guys um, doing interviews in the shed. Look, I feel like that one has legs. <laughs> It's four you legs. Can, you can see four that legs. Legs. <laughs> it has four legs. So yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, yeah, I think that one can go somewhere. Excellent. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. That's all Done. We got one. Yes. We got one. And Cheers to that, fellas. It's Absolutely. Right Cheers to that. You look like you need a refill. Do you want a refill? Oh, no. Wait. <laughs> okay. Do you no drink worries. I'll have some water, though. Yes, okay. Yeah. I can sort that out. Mm. <clears throat> oh, man. Oh, that's good. Oh, that's really I don't mind that segment. I think you can keep that segment. And you could change up what it is you're pitching every time. We, yeah, we try to do something different every time we get a guest in. Like we had Paul Bird in here. You know, if you know Paul Bird, yeah, yeah, yeah. does the Gold Coast That's, weather and the yeah. Brisbane crosses. So yeah. we got him to read the weather. Oh, bless him. So, that was um, awesome. But what we did is, because he does it unscripted, like, well, with no paper. Yeah, right. So what we did is gave him no um, basically southeast or the, oh, the Queensland coast and threw in some quirky ones, gave him a couple of minutes to look at that, took it off him and got him to deliver the weather. And he nailed it. Yeah, Every to minimum, maximum, so which is great because, like we were saying, you know, during that show, we expect them to be doing the live cross, and then when they cut to the synoptic chart, they're sitting there and reading from that, drop that down and go, go, done. done. No, yeah, he's doing yeah. it all from memory. So that's the whole, amazing. The so whole cool. thing, and yeah, it was brilliant. That's, a, that's amazing because when I wake up, I don't even know what side <coughs> of the bed I'm on, you know? Like... <laughs> no, nah, well, because I've seen him do the weather live, and when we got him in here, that's where I thought, well, that's a challenge. So we always try to do. You know, introduce something to make it a little bit of fun. So yeah. hopefully, you know, that the, the pitch yeah, yeah, or, yeah, or no, something like that oh, good. had a you know a little bit of bit of something in there. And we, we have a special guest, I guess, a special gift for our guests. Yes. Oh, Let me get stop. it. Yeah. So we've got something for you. Stop. Now we only have one size of ladies at the moment, so I hope oh it's okay. <gasps> I get a legit ten mm -hmm. shirt. Yes. Yep. Shush, 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 shush. <laughs> yeah. Please wear it in front. I will. Yes. I will. I was on the Ted Shed, ladies and gentlemen. Yes. This is a kind That's of an thing. Instagram yeah, post, right? Yeah, absolutely, right? I'm show you. Yes. <laughs> Selfie oh, in the Just so everybody knows, it comes in a combustible zero waste. Yes. Like, for those of you playing at home that you're like, it oh, does. It's very safe for the environment. That's good, yeah. <gasps> How fun! It is. It's yeah. a time. Oh my god. Okay. Doesn't say who it is, but it's close. No, look at this. She's working the camera. It. She has picked up her camera. I love I it. I loved it. Oh, but... I, I, know, I know exactly what it is. <laughs> She's all over it. That's the um, first thing you checked out when you're like, oh, oh my god, what an amazing shit. Like, camera one, camera, camera two, camera, 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 camera three. Camera got it. Wait, I got it. I got it. Sussed it out. Um, gentlemen, it's been an absolute pleasure. Thank thanks, you. Thanks for having me hang out in your bar. I right, loved it. Yeah. No worries yeah. at all. Thank you for coming in. It's always a, a pleasure to have people to, to chat. and. And someone that we can follow now with interest too. So I mean, that's what we love because we, we yeah. talked. I don't want to go on too long, but in our previous projects, we met so many incredible people. Yeah. That and those those relationships we've now had for twelve years. Yeah. And yeah. that's what we think about. You know, we've heard your story and we get to now follow you. Yeah. yeah. Thanks for sharing yeah. your story so, too. I appreciate yeah. it. And it's always nice to have like you know a, a bit of feminine vagina in here occasionally. It's the first time. I don't know. Okay. Well, not the first one in the shed, the no, first one on the show. The first one on the show. The first one on the show. So you've broken out, you've broken show. out virginity to Yay. the female. Oh, this is fun. Ladies and gentlemen, tune in for next week. See what else you guys break. Well, she's wrapped it up for us. Yes. Hey. We will. We will. Um, thanks for joining us. We hope you enjoyed having a chat. And um, yeah, we'll wrap it right there. Thanks for joining us. It was a real pleasure to have Anissa in the studio with us tonight. First female. Thank you very much for sharing your time with us. Well, thanks, guys. Okay, and um, we've got a message for the um, audience at home. What do they need to do? They need to like, subscribe, ring that bell, comment down below, share with your friends and family, and, of course, just tune in every week. Yeah, all of the above. Thanks very much. Thanks, guys. See, See you, you next time. Bye. Bye.